Hello everyone, my name is Cristina Carrillo and I am a counselor here at San Diego City College. Today this workshop is going to focus on pre-health careers. Today we'll be learning about preparation for different pre-health fields. Uh, we're going to start off with medical school. What prerequisites do you need to get into medical school and what other preparations you should, should be considering? We'll also talk about pharmacy school, physician assistant, what does it mean to go into a public health major and what opportunities you have in there? Um, physical therapy, what is the difference between physical therapy, occupational therapy, and what the overlap is? Uh, we'll talk about preparation and what are the educational levels necessary to work in these fields. Fields. Going from community college to pre-med to med student. We're going to talk about this journey and how do you start preparing now so that you can get through this long journey through medical school. The first step I want to mention is let's start changing our language. So if you're a student that wants to become a physician, that wants to go to medical school, the first thing I want you to start doing right now is start calling yourself pre-med that's already going to make a shift in your energy and how you are preparing and how confident you feel of um, preparing to go into medical school. Okay, so let's start with the fun stuff, the academic prerequisites. So a lot of students have heard that if you are pre-med, you have to major in biology. This is not necessarily correct. You can major in whatever you want, it doesn't matter, as long as you complete the medical school prerequisites. Now, each medical school differs a little bit, but the majority are going to align with what I have on the slide right here. So you need at least one year of biology. In the case of our campus, that is referring to biology 210A and 210B. You would also need a year of general chemistry, which is chemistry 200 with the lab and chemistry 201 with the lab. Also complete organic chemistry, which will be Chem 231 and Chem 233, both with the labs. A year of physics is also required, and the physics is actually depending on the campus. Um, some medical schools do not require a whole year of physics, some only require one semester. And then we have different series of physics, so you also have to see what their specifics are. Uh, we have in our campus physics 180 series and 181, and then we also have the physics 195, 196, 197. So meet with the counselor to see what is the best physics for your route. In the case of math, they usually require one semester of either calculus or statistics, but the majority do want statistics, so that is something to look into with your counselor also. Now, um, some medical schools will require once you are in upper division units, that means once you are transferred into university, they will require a biochemistry. They also recommend for you to take genetics, cell and molecular biology, and human physiology. All of these are recommended to take once you're at the university. Now, the majority of these are not necessarily because they are prerequisites to the medical school, but they might be good for preparation for MCAT. Okay, MCAT, I'm going to talk a little bit about it in the next slide, but it is um, the test that you have to take in order to get into medical school. Now, some students ask me about general education that you can take to prepare for the MCAT, and the recommendation is to take philosophy classes, psychology, and sociology classes. These are going to help you both for MCAT preparation and then also to just prepare to become a physician one day. So here we go with some do's and don'ts on your journey to medical school. Okay, so let's start with what to avoid. Try not to repeat courses. Withdrawal is better. Now, I want to say this cautiously because it doesn't mean go ahead and withdraw to all of your courses. I'm talking specifically about the science courses. So this goes also for uh, pharmacy schools, for physician assistant schools, for any higher level of education schools, what they do sometimes is they take the science major and just average out all of your scores. So what this means, if you took Biology 210A and got a D, repeated it and got an A, they're going to take the average from the D and the A and that's going to be your GPA score. 
okay? This is not the same for transferring. For transferring purposes, if you repeat a course, the higher grade is the one that's gonna count. So for transferring, it's not going to affect you, but for your next step, it will affect you. So always please consult with the counselor. So my next point is try not to have too many withdrawals. The withdrawals will affect your financial aid. It will affect your standing at each school. So you really need to make sure that you consult with the counselor before you make this decision. But overall, it is important to consider withdrawals over getting an F or a D in a science course that is going to be a pre-medical requisite. The next step is waiting last minute to see a counselor. This is not recommended. As counselors, we have a lot more information readily available for you um, that we can update you as soon as it comes. So please make sure that you're staying connected with somebody that can support you through the process, um, especially with these very nitty gritty um, information. And then the last um, piece that I am saying to avoid is comparing yourself with others. You do not want to be constantly comparing yourself with others because you're on your own journey. You have very specific circumstances, very specific situations that you are going through that you cannot be in constant comparison with somebody else. Okay, This is the long journey to medical school or to any of these pre-health careers. So you want to make sure that you're taking it at your pace and at your time and with the support and motivation that you need to okay some things to do um, are you can start doing volunteer experiences okay this can be at a clinic this can be at a homeless shelter this can be at an after school program it really doesn't matter what type of volunteer experience you just want something that you can add to your resume and to your application for medical school OK, um, of course, if it is any kind of clinical experience it is amazing. But the reality is those, those are very hard to get until you get entire level of education. Now, um, my recommendation is to complete your science sequences at the community college. What this means is that, for example, UCSD and SCSU might admit you as a transfer student as a biology major without completing some of the sequences, like the chemistry sequence. In the case of organic chemistry, some students have gotten accepted without completing the two semesters. Now, the recommendations for both medical schools and for me is to complete the series at the community college. In the case of if you transfer to UCSD and you did not complete chem, organic chemistry one and two, then you're not satisfying the prerequisite to the higher level chemistry that you have to take over there, which means it's going to put you behind and it will take longer for you to to complete your bachelor's degree at UCSD. Okay, um, A lot of opportunities for um, community college students are, are going to be in summer pre-health programs. So UCSD hosts them, a lot of state universities do too, and this is in preparation for medical school or any pre-health career, really. Um, there is a website that I'm gonna share with you later on that is going to show you where the pre-health programs are. And they're not just in San Diego, they're also all over the country. As you probably know, medical school, pharmacy school, a physician assistant school, they are extremely competitive to get in. So what you want to do is you want to play on your strengths. And there is a lot of strengths in being a student from community college. So some of the advantage of being a community college student is that you will have more time to complete clinical work, volunteer, and leadership opportunities. In the case of leadership opportunities, I'm talking from anything from like what you're doing in your job. Maybe you are a supervisor or you're a manager um, or you are the president of a club. You form a club on campus um, in, in order to get that leadership experience. The reality of a lot of our community college students is also that you are more mature and motivated. If you started at community college, there's so many barriers in the way that it makes you more resilient and it makes you that person that is going to be more of a go-getter um, that may be in other situations. Um, 
a big part of being a community college student too is that most of our students are interacting with different type of students, non-traditional students. So in your classroom, if you look at any of your classroom, you have somebody that's from 17, sometimes still in high school, 17 years old to 70 years old. So you are getting to interact with people from different walks of life at different points in their life um, that brings so much different experience to your personal growth also. So always use all of these um, um, different experiences as a way of increasing your value as a candidate to these schools. Okay, so in some situations, we're going to have to be working on straining our GPA. Now, in the case that a lot of students that are struggling with your GPA, there are a couple of options. The main option is going to be after you complete your bachelor's degree to try to do a post back program. The post back program is an additional year or two after a bachelor's degree that prepares you with additional courses, prepares you for the MCAT, gives you additional clinical experience, um, but these programs are going to also be counted in your GPA. But right now you're in community college and you have so much time to recover your GPA. So make sure that you're working hard and getting the support that is needed in order to strengthen your GPA. Remember that we have a lot of tutoring. We have a lot of professors that care. So make sure that you're reaching out for the help that you need to get the grades that you need. Now, in addition to that, what you want to be doing is preparing the most possible for the MCAT. Again, the MCAT is this test that you have to be taking before you apply to medical school. The MCAT is mostly going to be science-based, but it will have some sociology concepts and some philosophy concepts included. Other things that you can be doing, again, I already mentioned this, is doing clinical work, um, volunteering at hospital clinics, hospice, any other healthcare settings, um, any kind of academic research too. So if you don't know, we have a lot of opportunities at our transfer center um, where we have UCSD and other programs that are coming and talking to our students to recruit for research purposes. So make sure that you're staying connected. Um, also consider, again, leadership and community services, any kind of personal skills that you can work on developing. Um, that's the biggest thing about our community college students. Again, you are able to develop your empathy, communication skills, and um, anything else that you can be working on to contribute to your um, application. So I briefly mentioned the post-baccalaureate or post back programs. As you can see in this slide, I have posted the website where you can get information for all of the available post back programs in the United States. Um, in addition, this website, which is aamc.org, will give you information for medical schools, what are the requirements, what kind of programs they have, what um, summer programs they have. And again, the post back, I already went over all of this, but here's additional information for that. So here's information on the medical college admission test, also known as the MCAT. This is your basically your entrance exam into medical school. It has four components to the test. The first one is going to focus on chemistry and physics. The second one is critical analysis and reasoning skills, which you can further develop with philosophy class, but also with your science class. You're also going to be tested on biology and psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior. So that's why I was recommending some of the classes earlier. Now, if you have a very strong MCAT score, it's really going to help your application. But let's not forget some of the information on the slide is still going to tell you what the GPA requirements are. So most applicants, if we look at the column over here, applicants um, GPA usually is around 3.55, but the matriculants, which means the people that are actually get in is 3.70. In the case of the science GPA, you have majority 3.45, but the ones that get in are actually 3.64. So we also have to make sure that your GPA is as strong as possible. And if it's not, then, then let's look at other options like the post back. But the MCAT is extremely important and it is important to start preparing since um, community college. 
So here are some resources for you to start to explore. I would suggest for you starting at the Association of American Medical Colleges, which is going to have a lot of information for pre-med students. Maybe you can check out some of the summer programs that are available for you or start at a local conference. Now let's talk pharmacy school. Again, if you're a student that is pursuing pharmacy school, I want you to start changing your language and say that you are a pre-farm student. This is definitely going to help you align more with your ultimate goal, which is going to pharmacy school and give you that little boost of motivation. Um, for a student that is pursuing going into pharmacy school, you could potentially go for a PhD or a PharmD. Both of these are going to be focusing on research and it can give you a lot of different job opportunities. In order to get into pharmacy school, you need to take an exam called the PCAT exam. Now, some pharmacy schools are going to require the GRE instead of the PCAT, but both of them are going to be essential for an application. In order to transfer, you usually students are going to focus on chemistry. They have very similar prerequisites as medical school, but they're going to definitely focus more on chemistry. So a lot of our students end up choosing chemistry as their major to transfer. Some students have asked me about becoming a pharmacy technician before they even pursue this path. And it's definitely a good idea if you don't mind um, spending like a summer completing something like that, that is going to be fast and it gives you exposure to the industry. So it's not a bad idea. Um, talk to a counselor to see if this is the best path for you. In order to, or let's say, once you already became a pharmacist, a PhD, or a PharmD, there are so many different jobs that you can do. Some students decide to become a hospital pharmacist, which is working in a team of physicians, uh, nurse practitioners, and other health professionals to come up with strategies to work with different patients. So if you want to work directly with patients, that definitely is an opportunity. Uh, other students prefer to work in labs and research and development and the creation of new drugs, or maybe you want to work in a pharmacy, so that's also a possibility. Do a little bit of research if you're wondering what else you can do when pursuing a pharmacy degree or come and see a counselor so that we can further discuss that with you. So in the last couple of years, I've heard more and more of PA. PA stands for a physician assistant. This is a nationally certified and state license to practice medicine as part of physician led team. This does not mean that you are a physician, you always have to be working under somebody that is a physician, which means an MD. The level of education of physician assistant is actually going to be a master's level. So after you complete your bachelor's degree, you will be completing a master's in physician assistant. What do PAs do? They usually conduct physical exams, diagnose and treat illnesses, order and interpret tests, cancel on preventative health care, assist in surgery, write prescriptions, makes, make rounds in nursing homes and hospitals, and obtain medical histories. So they're always going to be under the supervision of a physician. In order to prepare for a physician assistant program, you have to complete some prerequisites. These prerequisites are going to mimic a little bit of medical school preparation and nursing school preparation combined. So students might have to take chemistry, human anatomy, physiology, microbiology, statistics, and psychology in order to prepare. So some students decide to prepare as a nursing major or a psychology major or sociology or sometimes even biology. You do not have to stick to any specific major, but it is usually encouraged if you complete something that is in the science field. In addition, you do have to complete two to four years worth of clinical work. So you will have to decide how you want to do that. It has to be either becoming a certified nursing assistant, a medical assistant, or even becoming a nurse. A lot of students end up doing that route because it's good pay while you're preparing to prepare for physician assistant school. Public health is the science of protecting and improving the health of people in their communities. This work is achieved by promoting healthy lifestyles, 
researching disease and injury prevention, and detecting, preventing, and responding to infectious diseases. A lot of students that go into the public health field is because they want to work in the healthcare field, but not necessarily directly with patients. So this might be a very good alternative for those students that want to contribute to the healthcare system, but just in a different way. The preparation for this major is completing some science classes, but it's not going to be as heavy as some of the other majors that we talked about today. Definitely, if this is something that you're considering, come and talk to a counselor and we can further explore how we can connect that to some of your passions, uh, strengths, and uh, hopefully future goals. Physical therapy is a growing field over the last couple of years. A lot of students decide to go this route because they're passionate about healthcare and they're passionate about working directly with patients. This field usually requires direct contact with patients and to, in order to increase mobility. This could be working with elders that have lost mobility because of a traumatic event or somebody that got in a car accident or somebody that does sports uh, and need, now needs to recover from an injury. A lot of students that end up going into physical therapy, they decide to study kinesiology. Kinesiology is a good major. I would recommend for you to do kinesiology with an emphasis in pre-physical therapy preparation because this is going to be what aligns the best for a student that wants to go into a doctorate in physical therapy. In order to practice, you have to get a doctorate in physical therapy. Uh, some of the prerequisites for these programs are anatomy, physiology, one year of biology, one year of general chemistry, one year of physics, psychology, and statistics. Occupational therapy is the use of assessment and intervention to develop, recover, or maintain the meaningful activities or occupations of individuals. So students that go into occupational therapy is because they want to help. It is similar to physical therapy where you help a patient recover um, from an injury or some kind of traumatic event uh, or a developmental stage when you're working with younger kids. Usually physical therapists and occupational therapists work together with the patient. It's just that physical therapy works with the bigger muscle groups and occupational therapy with the smaller muscle groups. For example, any kind of occupational things refers to brushing your hair, brushing your teeth, uh, eating, cutting with scissors, writing with a pen. All of those types of activities is what an occupational therapy works with their patient to develop. Some of the prerequisites to get into a master's in occupational therapy will be anatomy, physiology, statistics, psychology, and medical terminology courses. Most students decide to major in psychology or sociology and then complete their prerequisites before they decide to apply to the master's in occupational therapy. Some of these programs also require the GRE, so it's also good to look into each individual program to see what their requirements are. We made it to the end of the workshop. Now, what else do you need to do? My top three suggestions are meet with the counselor so that we can define what your goal is and how are you going to get there. We can complete an educational plan for you that is going to tell you each class that you need to take in order to get to the next level. I also suggest that you build relationships with your professors, counselors, and mentors. This is going to be very important through your academic journey because you never know when you're going to need that additional guidance or a letter of recommendation. I also recommend for you to find a support system. Through this process is going to be a lot of ups and downs and you want to make sure that you have your people to rely on. And if you don't have specific people, then figure out how you can work on your own intrinsic motivation to help you through this process.